And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to talk about the Dungeons and Dragons Dice Masters game. Now, this is a game that is compatible with the Dice Master games that have already come out. There's three sets already, Avengers vs. X-Men, uh, Uncanny X-Men, both those Marvel, Yu-Gi-Oh! And now Dungeons and Dragons. But you don't need to have those other ones. You don't need to know anything else about those. I'm going to show you a little bit about how this game is played. It's a self-contained set. All you need to do to play this game really is buy one starter, although I recommend buying one starter and a pile of boosters to give you some extra options. But let's take a look at the game and we'll be back. In a game of Dice Masters, you are going to take a team of eight different characters. Uh, these characters can be heroes or monsters from the Dungeons and Dragons universe. And you are going to go up against your opponent, trying to make your opponent lose 20 life. You're going to do that by first, you're going to pick these eight characters, and then you're going to pick 20 dice between these characters. So each character has a certain level of how many dice you can take for them. And in the Dungeons and Dragons game, it's always four. So you can take up to four dice per character, but you can't take 32 dice, only 20. So you have to choose which dice you're going to take for each character. You're also going to pick two basic actions. In the starter set, there are 10 basic actions which come with it, and you're going to pick whether you want to use Finger or Death or Cone of Cold or Dimension Door, etc. Your opponent's also going to have two basic actions. There will be four basic actions. Each of them is matched up with one particular color of dice and both players have access to those. So you have access to your own eight characters and to all four of the basic action cards. Players are going to start with eight NPC dice. Uh, these are these white dice here, and they're going to put them in a bag. The game comes with two um, bags, but they're not very good, so we're going to use my bag. On a player's turn, they're going to draw four dice from this bag and place them and into, their, into their reserve pool, and they're going to roll them. This is an Avengers vs. X-Men mat that I'm going to use to show how the dice are played and used. It's the same essential thing as the Dungeons and Dragons one. You do not need one of these mats to play, but it does make it a little easier. On your turn, you'll draw four dice, like I said, and you're going to roll them. You can pick any number of dice and re-roll them. The basic sidekick dice are going to show you different types of energy. Uh, you can see here strength energy and defense energy, etc. Uh, there's even a question mark symbol that is any sort of energy. And sometimes you'll roll these on the basic dice. These are NPCs. Now, you can use these dice to buy other dice. Each die has a cost. So let's say, for example, I want to buy a troll die. Uh, the, this is a troll character card. There are many different character cards here in the game. The troll has some symbols on it. You can see here that he's evil and that he can hold a weapon. You also see uh, it is sh at the bottom shows you all six sides of his dice in case you're not really sure what kind of die he is. Here's a, a troll die for reference. Uh, and then it shows any special abilities that he has here. At the top here shows the cost of this particular troll and that troll costs four, but at least one of the energy you spend must be strength or a wild, the, the question mark. So I can spend that amount and place it in my used area buy a troll die and put it here. You can also buy those basic action dice that are in the middle of the table that both players can use like this polymorph card here. And when you do that you just spend three of any type. Now once you get these new types like this troll one here you'll see that this troll has two fists on one side so that it gives double energy and the basic action dice will give two of basically colorless energy, energy you can use to buy many different things. When a player is finished with their buying and their deploying, they then have an attack phase. During an attack phase, I'm going to choose which of my creatures to attack with. So let's say, for example, I attack with all three of these creatures here. I have a unicorn, a troll, and a, um, a, a NPC. And then my opponent can decide which of these he's going to block. So let's say he decides he's going to block the unicorn with his NPC, and he's going to block the troll with his owlbear. He's not going to block my NPC. So my NPC is going to do one point of damage to the opponent uh, himself. So he's down, a, he's down one less life. And then 
goes to the used area. We then look at the here. The unicorn has a three attack and three defense. The NPC has a one attack and one defense. So I KO his NPC, who goes to a KO'd area. And my unicorn, nothing happens to him because it wasn't enough damage. He just goes back to my field zone. My troll does three damage to the owlbear. The owlbear has four hit points, so that doesn't do enough damage. And then the owlbear does two damage to my troll, which doesn't do enough to kill him, so he comes back and the owlbear goes back to their field zone. However, whenever you KO an opponent, they will get to roll that die with their four dice that they roll. So if you have several people KO'd, you may roll a lot of extra dice on your next turn. Again, each person that gets through or is not blocked is going to deal damage to your opponent. Once your opponent is down to less than 20 life, they are KO'd and the game is over. You will continue taking turns back and forth and doing this until one player loses. When you play Dice Masters and buy a starter pack, you're going to get eight different cards three versions of each card. So I can use the Apprentice Humanoid Troll, the Minion Humanoid Troll, or the Lesser Humanoid Troll. It's up to me which one I'm going to use. They have different costs, different special abilities, but they always use the same dice. You can also buy booster packs where I can get, you know, different cards. Perhaps here I can get, for example, the Red Dragon and the Troll. I open a pack of cards, and in that card, uh, pack of cards, I will get two cards and the matching die for each one. So if you buy lots of these packs, uh, they're called foil packs, and they come in what's called a gravity feed. You can buy a whole gravity feed of 90 of these packs. Um, and so you get two cards, and you can mix and match and hopefully look for rare ones. See, what happens is if you look carefully at the bottom of these cards, let me show you the, the red dragons here. Here's three red dragons, and if you see at the bottom of the cards, there's a line running across them. This is gray, that means common. This is green, uncommon. This is red, that means ultra rare. And there's also a yellow line, which is just a typical rare. When I opened my gravity feed, I got two ultra rares in it, which is uncommon for Dice Masters. Normally, you usually get one in each gravity feed, um, but I don't know how common that will be. Maybe it will be different for you. There's a huge variety of cards. I don't have all of them, and I'm not going to show all of them, but I want to show you enough to show you kind of what's in the game. There are cards that have nothing on them, like this Orc here, or this Drow Assassin. They're just dice you can buy, and they have different stats. There are dice like this Purple Worm, which have a special ability. Here is Overcrush. Think of this as Trample from Magic the Gathering, where the, when you are blocked by a weenie guy, the damage that you do over that to kill them is passed on to your opponent. And there's this Vampire here who energy drains somebody. The first time they knock out an adventure, you gain a life and your opponent gets a life. Um, here, I'm sorry, no, that's, I'm sorry, that's not the energy drain, that's a special ability for this vampire has. An energy drain just means when you attack an opponent, they will spin down, which means they'll go down a level. Each card has three levels, so you can see here, the mummy card here has three levels. This is level one, level two, level three. The third level of the zombie is a four, six, that's the side you want to roll, but it costs one energy to summon that, to, to put that out in your field zone. Uh, like over here, the vampire, it costs two to put out her third level. So you have to save some energy to put those people out. But the, these guys have this energy drain which can spin people down. Then we have this gentleman here, uh, Tarask, I think is how you say him. He has regenerate. When he's knocked out, there's a chance that he isn't. He, he re-rolls it. If he does regenerate, he does four damage to everybody. There are lots of dragons in the game that have breath weapons where you can pay extra energy to do, like this one, you can pay one extra energy to do one damage to your opponent and all the creatures that that person has. Or here's the blue dragon with a breath weapon of one, a green dragon with a breath weapon of two, the Dracolich with a breath weapon of three. And there's all different kinds of dragons and there's different, again, remember there's three to four of each of the different types. There's also characters in the game. There's an elf wizard. Here's a half orc fighter. These characters have what's called experience. So you pick something. You can use any token you want. You can even use extra dice if you want. When they kill a monster on the attack, they will get a token, which gives all the elf wizards and or all the half orc fighters a plus one attack, plus one defense on them. And you notice he also gets a plus one attack and defense if he has gear equipped, but that's something different. 
So, but this only works when they're attacking and only if you kill an enemy monster, which is not the same as one of these characters here. But still, it does make them think twice before they block you with a monster. Other characters in the game are the human paladin and the dwarf cleric and the halfling thief. So there's different characters and each character has different special abilities and uh, different uh, statistics on them. There's another special ability in this one called Swarm, which when you have an orc on the table and you draw another orc, you can automatically draw an extra die. So that basically as they're swarming, they're coming out. And there are lots of different cards with Swarm. Here's the Surge. Man, I hate these guys in D&D. And the Kobold here who has Swarm. There's even a Kobold in this game that has a cost of one. Uh, cost of one cards are rare in Dice Masters, very cheap. But then again, this guy here, when he's fielded, he... Uh, when he has very low stats. You can see he's a 1-2, even on his third level. Other characters in the game include the Mind Flayer, the Nasty Mind Flayer, the Unicorn. You saw me fighting with the Unicorn earlier. The Frost Giant, who can only be blocked by two or more characters. You can block a character with more than one character. With a Frost Giant, you have to. The Minotaur, who we all know are just simply cool. The Carrion Crawler, who are kind of the opposite of cool, but when they're fielded, it means when you put them out, it knocks out an NPC from your opponent. When this guy's fielded, he gets plus one attack, plus one defense for each opposing NPC until the end of the turn. An invisible stalker. If he attacks by himself, he can't be blocked. My favorite monster, the gelatinous cube. This guy here, when he's fielded, he can capture an opposing NPC. And you basically just hold on to that guy until you put out another gel gelatinous cube. Uh, the Owlbear, when he's fielded, it knocks out an adventure. The Nasty Beholder, when he goes out, he can use all the special basic action cards. The Pit Fiend, which makes other fiends cheaper to get out. There's also equipment cards, or gear cards they're called. These cards can be added to somebody. When you roll these, they don't have stats. When you just roll it, you can equip it, attach it to a character that can hold it. Each character is a symbol whether they can hold it or not. This one here, for example, gives them a plus one attack, plus one defense. This one makes the character who can only be blocked by two or more characters, just like that frost giant I showed you. Um, here's another half-orc fighter who can hold things, and he gets a special ability when he's holding gear. Here's a half-dragon who, when he's out, dragons cost less to purchase. Uh, Manticore, uh, when he's active, he does one damage to each opposing character as soon as it goes out in the field. A tree ant, which makes evil characters cost more. A were rat, which makes evil characters cost less. The Umber Hulk, your opponent cannot field NPCs when he's out there. And then there are like special ability uh, spells. Here we have a limited wish spell. When you roll a spell, you just do whatever it says. It's like a basic action card. And so here I can pick any die and roll it. That's not been bought. This can give me a die for free every turn, as long as I roll the side that's not energy. Uh, more, more limited wish spells. Uh, here I can search a bag for a die and put it on its level one side. Here I can name a die. If my opponent pulls that die, I can return it to its card and make them get rid of it. Or Prismatic Spray here, where I can make all my opponent's characters lose all their card text until the end of the turn. So there's lots of different special abilities. There's so many different cards in the game. There's three, at least three of every type. The ones that come in the base set, there's four of. And that gives you huge amounts of variety as you build them. And don't forget, like I said, there's the basic action cards. Like Polymorph, and Stinking Cloud, and Fireball, and Charm and Blessing, and Dimension Door, and Cone of Cold, and Magic Missile! Like this one, for example, if you roll that, it's energy, but if you roll the spell, it deals two damage to target character or player. And if you roll the one with two stars, it does extra damage equal to the level of your highest level adventure in the field. Resurrection can bring one of your creatures back to life. Finger of Death, an expensive one, but can basically kick someone right out of the field. So basically, these action cards are cool, but remember when you bring one to the game, your opponent can also buy the dice for that. Now, if you've watched my other reviews about Dice Masters, the Marvel Dice Masters, you know that I love it and it is one of my favorite games. I think the whole system is absolutely phenomenally fun. It's like Magic the Gathering mixed with Quarriors. Two games I like a lot. 
uh, Magic the Gathering with dice in his essence. You, but what I like about the game is that you're not w worrying about the random shuffling of a deck. Instead, you have all the people out there. You're now rolling dice. You have that free reroll that you can use, and you have to try and guess and pick the right dice. So there is some building of the deck ahead of time. You're building your eight characters, trying to get ones that work together. But the game is very tactical, and I like how you can put the characters out and fight one another. How does this translate with the Dungeons & Dragons universe? Well, I think it does a very good job of that. This game is very different than the other ones in that it has the different heroes who can level up, which is, can become very powerful. The heroes are not very powerful, but they can have equipment given to them, and they can uh, level up, which can make them extremely powerful, almost too powerful, except your opponent knows that when they attack and he blocks with a monster and you kill that monster, then that hero can uh, can grow exponentially. You got to be very careful about that. So when you're building your your, your army here, you, you want to use heroes, but you might want to use some monsters too. Uh, the monsters are much more powerful, and there's all kinds of cool monsters. And there's undead monsters like zombies that when you kill them, they just come right back. And you kill them, they come right back. <laughs> But then again, there's the Dwarf Cleric, who when he fights undead monsters, you have to re-roll all of them, and if they roll aside that's energy, they're gone. You know, it's that just basically getting rid of the undead, warding them off. And so, I, I mean, I thought this was a phenomenal set. The artwork in this game is just amazing. I think the layout of these cards, and this is hard for me to say because I love superheroes, and I think they did a good job on the, the Marvel sets, but man, this one looks better. It really does. They use rich, good artwork. Um, they look great out there. The whole layout of the cards. The dice are cool. I mean, the dice are always cool. And there's always going to be a couple dice that I don't like that are clear and are harder to read. But for the most part, very clear. I think probably my favorite die is maybe the, 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 the troll. It looks like a piece of candy. Um, well, so does the, uh, the uh, halfling thief. It just Mm, mm, I, I don't know, but I like the dice and there's a lot of dice in this game. Now, if you're getting into the game, like I said, you could buy a gravity feed, but that's really expensive. I mean, it's a dollar a pack, which is really cheap. So I have found that if you buy about 20 packs and a starter deck, you will have a ton to play around with. You really will. That gives you 40 dice plus all the dice that come in the base set. And so you and one friend could easily play and mix those. I've also tried a draft version of this where we drafted the different uh, packs of cards uh, and, and you open them up to, and play. And that worked also was really fun and interesting. However, if you buy a gravity box, you won't get everything. You won't get every rare, you won't get every ultra rare, but you will get almost everything. I have four dice for every character except the couple knows. I hardly ever use four dice for all the characters anyway, so there's some I only have three for. But I have I have at least one of every type of card. I should say I have at least two of every type of card, and that's plenty for me. If I'm missing a few rares, ultra rares, I don't feel like they're that much more powerful than the commons anyway. They're just different. I also really enjoy this set because it brings in some good um, some good flavor. I like the different cards, the the, uh, the 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 leveling up of the heroes, the regenerate, the the level draining, and things like that. That felt like some of the D and D or even Magic the Gathering keywords coming in here and being involved in this. It almost makes me feel like they could actually take Magic Gathering and stick it in Dice Masters, and it would work. But as it is, this is a great set. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's really it's really up there. I will say that this set is compatible with Yu-Gi-Oh! and Marvel Dice Masters. Not perfectly compatible because as you notice, there's a lot of good versus evil. Okay, that we can do uh, because we just say that the villains are evil and the heroes are good in the original, in the, in the Marvel sets, fine. But then you have the heroes level up when I kill monsters. Well, none of the superheroes are monsters, so that could be detrimental if you put those in a deck against other people. The basic actions, they mix really well. Resurrection, you can bet I'll be sticking that in a Marvel deck somewhere. And I think you can do some things. I think it'd be fun to take a Marvel deck and have a dragon with you or a beholder. <laughs> but you don't have to. As a self consenting set, this is good, but it can be mixed. So anyhow, a marvelous set. Really enjoyed this a lot. 10 out of 10 for me, Dice Masters, Dungeons and Dragons. Dice Tower of Judgment. Amazing! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. 
I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Shut the door.